Hey, this is Neil, the art instructor at masterpaintingnow.com and also Udemy, where you can find tons of tutorials. This here is a bonus video to my course on how to draw anime bodies and figures. So it is free. Um, that, that is um, here on for you guys right now. I'm offering it free for my YouTubers. And if you're already a student of the course, then you'll see that they're under the bonus videos. Also, if you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and sign up for that course. It's really awesome. And go ahead and uh, you can actually request other bonus videos like this that will only appear in that course on Udemy. You get lifetime access to the course. So anyway, let's get started on how to draw hands for anime. Now, it's very important, I think, that when you're drawing hands for anime, uh, or in any, in any way, that we draw them in the Nats position. So before, I've had other hands tutorials where we start like this, and we have the basic shape of the hand here and here, you know, the thumb coming off like this, and then, then the wrist, right? And it's always facing up, but we hardly ever draw hands facing up. We draw hands you know, in their Nats position attached to the body facing down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw our our forearm, just a basic shape for a forearm coming down like this, and then we'll draw the wrist area. Now, naturally, when the when the hand bends, you have this wrist area right in here, and this is the part I think of as an accordion. I'll talk about what I mean about that in just a second. Then you have your part of the hand that actually comes off, and the, and it's basically as wide as it is here, it is here or long. It's the same length. So you take the length first. You draw uh, the length here, and then duplicate it. And that's the finger. So this is where your knuckles would be. And that's important to understand. And then the thumb would actually come off where the wrist is at. And the thumb comes off here and has its own shape. And then comes up like that. And it usually comes up to about, you know, ha about halfway. In, like if this is uh, the halfway part, or almost halfway part, you have, the, you have your first knuckle. It's right about there to that first knuckle or, or below that first knuckle, just depending on the, the position of the hand. That's the basic breakdown. Now with this part here, the wrist, I think about it as, as a... Um, an accordion. What I mean by that is when you bend the wrist, you know, left or right like this, then what happens is that accordion stretches or bends, kind of like the waist. Remember how we talk about the waist? You have the center of the waist, you have your rib cage here, you have your hips down here, and so you have this, you have this bend that happens. So when you want to bend the hips this way, like this, then naturally you're usually going to take the collarbone and bend it the opposite way this way. So you're going to have a crunching on this side and a stretching on that side for your for your torso. Think about the same way for hands, that here you're going to have a crunching on, on this side here and a stretching on this side. This is why I think of it like as an accordion. Think about like, you know, how an accordion looks. You know how it looks. Anyway, and so now the thumb would still come off of this, off this part here, like we have over here, and the hand would then come down like this because we're, we're bending the hand inward. And we're going to have the same, that same length for the fingers. If you just keep these basic shapes in mind, I, I personally find it much easier to draw the hand if you just kind of add those shapes in very quickly as gestures, this being the wrist here. What this helps you get is that, that look you have when you view the hand from this way. You'll have this little bone that kind of protrudes out right here. Then you're going to have this kind of shape comes like this, and then you have the palm of the hand like this. And this is how you get that awesome shape, and then you have your fingers coming out. And how to get that shape is think about that accordion. If you were to bend the hand the opposite way than this, then you'd have an opposite bend in the wrist. I'm going to readjust my screen here, or my, well, my, you know, the thing I'm drawing on, my Cintiq. So we'll have the arm coming down the same way, but this time we're actually going to draw the hand the other way. So now we take that same idea of the wrist, but now we're going to have the accordion going this way. So we have, this, we have the stretch on this side and the crunch on this side. And so we, we treat the wrist here the same way we treat the torso. And then we'll have the hand come off this way. So you'll have your hand going like this. And then you would have that same length coming out for your fingers. And then the thumb is still on the same side coming off that same area. Yeah, the thumb comes out. Imagine there's like a little triangle piece like this that comes out. And that's what the thumb attaches to. And it comes off of this part of the wrist here, this, uh, this bottom line. Always it's on this bottom line of that wrist joint area that we're talking about here. All right, we'll put the thumb in there like that. Right, so this is the basic idea of the wrist function, how the wrist can move back and forth. It can also move up and down. So I want to cover the wrist first, and then we'll get into more about the hands and the knuckles and the fingers and the underside, you know, other things like that. So when you draw the hand more from the side view, then we can bend it either out or in. So let's go ahead and do that really quick here. Maybe I should go ahead and actually keep some of these and then redraw other ones. 
we'll have the arm. This is the forearm. We're just doing a basic shape for the forearm for now, coming out like this. And now we have to do the same accordion type idea, even though it's from the side view, it's not bending toward or away from us. It's not, the hand's not waving side to side like you're waving to someone. Raise your hand and like, act like you're waving to someone. That's what we just covered previously. Now we're covering if your hand's going up and down, like flapping up and down like a dolphin swims. And so in that case, from the side view, we will have the wrist like this. So if it's bending this way, then this side's the crunch and that side's the stretch. What this helps you do is it helps you understand from the side view you have this kind of bump right here to the wrist and that leads into your hand. Now from the side view the shape of the hand's a little different. It's kind of like a triangle so you just go ahead and draw that triangle piece right here and it kind of goes like this. The reason why it has an angle to it here, is the reason why the triangle doesn't come all the way out like this, is because the thumb, the first part of the thumb is actually shorter and then the thumb actually connects right here. This is that same we're kind of viewing this whole shape here from the side view. So we're seeing part of the thumb and part of that. And so this is part of the, the finger part that we're seeing. And so this right here will go on to create your fingers. And this will go on to create your thumb. Sometimes you can imagine a round ball joint here kind of helps to do the thumb. And the thumb's going to come off of here like so. And then the fingers are going to come off here. Now keep in mind that you have to go to your knuckle. So the knuckle goes right about here. So that's the full shape. It kind of looks like this from, this from the side view. This length from here to here, you have to replicate it out to, for your longest finger. That would be your middle finger. But right now, what we're going to be seeing since we're on the thumb side of the hand is the index finger first, like so. There's this piece of skin in between here. We'll get into, the, and we'll get into that in a little bit. For now, I'm just dealing with the wrist. Then you have maybe see a little bit of the middle finger, which is going to be the longest finger. It actually wouldn't be that long, but you'd be able to see it a little bit in the background like that. And maybe some other fingers, you know, curving in, like so. Right, so that would be how you draw the hand from the side view when the hand's tilted inward like this and not just straight. If you do it straight, so it's have a little bit of bump here and it's going to come out. You draw, you draw that exact same shape like this, you know, but the hand is, is more straight instead of bent inward. But it looks better, I think, when you bend it inward, adds, adds more direction or movement to it. We can also take that same movement now and we can also bend it outward. So let's go ahead and do that now. You have the same wrist area here, but this time we want to draw the wrist the opposite way. And when we do that, we imagine the accordion going the opposite way, like this. And this will help us draw that, that proper shapes that we need for the hand. The hand then is going to grow off the wrist. It's coming out this way. We're, kind of, we're going to kind of start with that simple triangle shape first, and then kind of change the shape a little bit to where it goes more like that by adding two circles to it. And that kind of adds a shape, something like this. Right here is where you have that first kind of almost seems like a, a knuckle of your thumb that kind of goes right here. Remember that it comes off the wrist like this. And so the thumb kind of comes like that and has meat because you're seeing part of the under palm of the thumb there. Imagine a straight line and then a knuckle and the thumb then connects like this. That's the basic shape of the thumb. And the finger is going to come off here and you have the index finger. Let's give it a slightly relaxed look. Remember, it's going to be the same length from here to here to here. And then you might be able to see a little bit from the back side here. Some of your, um, it's overlapping it, but you'll see a little bit of the middle finger there maybe. And then other fingers kind of, you know, coming down if they're, if they're more relaxed. And the middle finger might also come down if it's more relaxed. Right, so that's the basic shape of the side view. You don't see that wrist bone um, from this view really. But you might be able to see a little bit of this indent area here where it's kind of shaded in. Right, so this is just, we're just going through like in wrist mechanics right now because you know, the hand's a very complex thing. Learning how the hand moves is kind of like learning the whole entire body. And um, so again, this is a bonus video to my how to draw anime people and bodies. And so if you, if you always wondered like, hey, how can I take my figure knowledge and, and start drawing anime figures, because animated figures follow a very strict type of proportions, I teach how to apply a universal way to draw figures and then apply that to anime. So it makes it really easy to draw anime figures by taking relative proportions. And that's what the course covers and also has a brief uh, two hour anatomy course. It's like it takes anatomy and crunches it down to two, two, two hours and it covers pretty much everything you need to know about, about anatomy for the body but not for hands and feet or faces and heads. I also have my manga course on um, 
how to draw faces and heads, and that's complementary to the body course. So if you take both courses together, you'll know how to draw faces, hair, and bodies. And I'm trying to do some bonus videos now for the, um, for the body course, for anime body course, to, for hands and feet. Anyway, so this is the, uh, the wrist movement you have here. That's the basic wrist movement you have. Your, your wrist can move side to side or up and down. And it can also go in a whole entire circle between, between those arrays of left and right, up and down. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean in a 3D program. Actually, there's no point in doing that. I don't want to open it. Just take your own hand, look at it, and roll your wrist around in a circle motion. And you can see you have that wider range of movements. But it's a mixture of the up and down and the left and right movement of your thing, uh, of your wrist. And as you do that left to right, it stretches. Um, it, gets con it gets crunched or stretched, and then crunched or stretched, depending on you know, what way you're moving your hand. The size of your hand, if you take, if you take a typical head... Right, take a typical head shape here, and this say this is your eyebrows. The, a hand will go from here up to here. That's about the that's about the size of your hand. If you take your hand and put it to your face, you'll see that's about the size of your hand. That's about how much of your face it covers. This being the halfway part where your knuckles are. Right. So there you go. That's it. Pretty simple. So if you're wondering when you're drawing your, your human figure, how big your hand should be, that is. Now let's get more into the dynam dynamics of the hand and, and its movements, some of the finger movements and uh, placements of, of um, what you see between fingers and things like that. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted some of the size of the hands here so they kind of be more consistent. This one should still be a little bit bigger, though. But anyway, so when we have this uh, front view, again, we're drawing the front view of the hand. I can actually, you know, bend it in more if I wanted to here since I have that 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 bend of the wrist there, I can actually take the hand and really bend it in more like that. Right, so this is um, from the front view. And again, what I'm doing here is a little different than other um, hand tutorials you see out there and other hand tutorials I've done in the past, which is drawing the hand in more of its natural position, like as it hangs on the body. You know, that's how we draw hands mostly. We don't draw hands, you know, facing up, you know, like I, like I demonstrated earlier. The things to remember um, when it comes to the hand from this front view is that you have the knuckles at about this halfway line here. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here before we get some of the details. One of the things that's important is if you have your wrist and it's it's pulled this way like that, we have it convexed over here and it's open and stretched over here. Or, or rather, um, I should have drawn that the other way around. Let's go ahead and just, I meant to, I meant to um, do it like this. It's stretch beams, it's convex like that. Now within this part here that's being, that's being stretched, this part's being convex, so this part's scrunched, this part's being stretched. Is you have, let's go ahead and kind of just clean up these lines here a little bit. Right here, you have a little bone that that comes out there, and that's part of the the ulna bone, and it tends to be more toward the higher part of this stretching area here when it stretches like that. And then it comes down here to the hand, and the hand it has a pad here because on the underside of the hand, we'll we'll do the underside of the hand here in just a minute. The underside of the hand, you have two pads: the pad of your of your thumb here and then the pad of your pinky and then you have this pad up here and you have a space in between the pads almost like a triangle and these three padded areas are really important to understand but so you have this pad here and it kind of sticks out from from this from this view from both the top view and from the bottom view the knuckles then actually fit past a little bit further than than how the pad is going to be so if you imagine the pad which is the underside of the, of the palm the pad is actually going to come up to right about here. This would be the, the under part of the pad the, if you're drawing the under, if you're drawing the palm side of the hand. So this would be like your your thumb here. You, ha you have, oops, you have your thumb pad here. This kind of pad that kind of comes up like this. And then you'd have this pad right here that's, that serves as the, you know, four, you can almost feel like the four calluses there. You can develop four calluses here. And that's where you like hold on to stuff and grip stuff. However, the knuckles are a little bit further back than that. The knuckles would appear right about here. So you have your middle knuckle here, and we'll go ahead and erase some of this so we can see it better. Just keep in mind that the line for your pads is a little bit further down than the line for your knuckles. The line for the knuckles is pretty much that halfway point. This would be your first knuckle here. This will be your middle pinky knuckle. We're not going to get too much into the anatomy and stuff of that. Um, you know, if you want the anatomy, anatomy of the hands and stuff, I go to that into my, in my course quite greatly in my anatomy course. It's called Anatomy for uh, Figure Drawing and Comics. 
Imagine that all these wires attach here to the metacarpal, and they but and they come through that. There's like a almost like a tunnel of tissue they come through, and so they kind of originate out from that point like this. Boom. That's how you get those different wires or these you know these different uh, tendons right here, which kind of are like wires. They run over your knuckle and out down to each tip, the tip of each finger here. They kind of branch out like that. You know, again, I'm not going to go into the anatomy of it. We're keeping this very simple, but that's just the idea behind it. So you have one knuckle here. You have your index knuckle here. Then you have your ring finger knuckle here, and then your pinky knuckle over here, which is be a lot smaller. That's the basic upper part of the hand. Let's go and start erasing some of these lines in between here. Another thing to keep in mind is you have a slight angle that goes like this and like that for the hand. It also follows the fingers. That is the middle fingers being the longest, its knuckles also the longest. So it has this, this angle, you just want to memorize this angle, it kind of comes up to the middle finger and slopes down to the pinky. If you keep that angle in mind, it makes it really easy to draw your fingers at the appropriate length. So the middle finger being the longest is going to be the same length as from here to here. Or approximately, every, every hand's a little bit different, but as an approximation that will work really well. For anime, we keep the fingers very simple. So um, you would take the underlying idea of anatomy, but you're going to, you know, just you know, simplify it. So it's just going to be this kind of simplified finger here. Usually come to 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 points. It's very rare you draw fingernails. If you do, there's going to be like little hints at fingernails like that. You're not going to draw like you know the knuckles or lines and knuckles or things like that. Maybe for guy hands, but definitely not female hands. And then for knuckles, we're actually going to, since the hand is open and not closed or anything, the knuckles are going to look more like like little lines like this. Right? You might be able to see a little bit of tendon depending on how, how big the person's hand is. Now remember I said, well, let's first let's go ahead and draw the other the other fingers out here. We follow that line that we have created here. And keep in mind there's also a piece of a piece of skin in between the thumb and the the hand. It's like a triangle piece of skin like this. So if you imagine this triangle piece of skin, it's like a flap of skin there between your fingers. So if you had the bones, you'd have like a bone coming down like this, and this bone coming off like this, and then between those bones you have a flap of skin. And when the thumb is open more, when this when the thumb comes out like over here more like this, there's still a flap of skin between there and it has to stretch more like this. It actually comes down further to the thumb like that. And that, that would be the webbing between between the thumb and the index finger. But when the hand's more closed, the thumb's closer here to the to the index finger, then the webbing's not going to be as much. You're going to have a little bit of overlapping of skin here, like that. But that webbing's still there; it just it just scrunches up a little bit. Now, remember, I said between the fingers you have the the webbed, which goes like this. Now, that webbing between your fingers is actually the underside of your palm. We'll get into that in a second when we do the underside. Okay, make sure you keep your don't make your fingers too thin. I, you know, typically anime fingers are, are quite thin and delicate, but um, don't make them too thin. In this case, we're actually seeing a little bit of the side plane of the finger because of the angle of the finger and a little bit of that, of that kind of top plane. We might be able to see a little bit of that shape of that knuckle and then a little bit of the side plane here. That, that, that webbing between it. And then finally you have the pinky, which is going to come off. We're just going to have it, you know, kind of a sort of relaxed hand here, that's way too long. Again, you keep those the same angles that we had drawn earlier, a little bit of webbing in between them. And then I have, have, have that line actually overlap all the way up to the knuckle. And the knuckle here is more on the side. When you're drawing it from this view, like so. Like that. Remember, they're all going back to this point over here if you were to draw them back. Of course, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have all that definition, especially on a female hand. Maybe for like an older person, even a bad guy male, you might do it. Right, so that's the basic construct, construction of, of the hand. You can make the fingers longer if you want to, that's up to you. Um, sometimes anime hands are, are typically long, and so you can make the whole entire hand longer than this. Just stretch out everything. Main, mainly it's the fingers you want to stretch out, just make them all a little bit longer. So if we were to do that, we can just erase the fingers here and then make them all just a little bit longer.
Make sure to keep in uh, the portions the same. come off of that knuckle right there like that so I keep the proportion same but the fingers come out a little bit longer and I you know I'm drawing this very quickly because I don't want the video to go on too long and of course when you when you try to do that sometimes things don't quite look as, as good as they could if you were to actually take your time and draw it more but the principles is, is what's important that's what's being taught here All right, so there we have it. Might be a little bit of overlapping of that finger there. Okay, so basically the fingers, if you were to view it more from the from a front view, like you're looking at the front view here, they have you have an arch here when you when you view it from the front, and your fingers fit in here. So this is your pinky, ring finger, middle finger, and let's index finger. You have an overlapping of forms here for each knuckle. And you're coming out to, you know, the tips of the fingers here like this. It's coming out toward you. And when that happens, you can see the fingers actually attaching right to this part right here. And this is that flaps of skin in between. So you'd actually draw the fingers would be connecting into this part here this is actually I'm seeing more of the front view and it should actually overlap that more All right the knuckles gonna be up here you'll be able to see that the flaps of skin right there in between it and these the fingers will actually come up into there like that and that's like the web the webbing in between the fingers Right, so now if we draw the underside of this same palm here, it's obviously going to be viewed the opposite way. So have the arm come down like this. We're going to have the stretching convection like this. And then we're going to have the hand coming off here, this kind of triangle piece here. First we'll draw our, our hand kind of coming off over here somewhere like this. And then we'll draw the thumb. So let's draw our hand coming off first. This is easier. That being the main palm part. And then you have your fingers coming out being the same length as this here. Then you have the triangle piece coming off like that, and that's for your thumb. Your thumb's actually going to come off there. The pinky side, remember, we talked about it has this bump that tends to be toward the top half here. But from, from the, this side, we don't really see it as much. What we see more is like the palm kind of starting to come out right here a little bit, like so. And then you come out to that more of that bulge part of the palm like this. From the inside here, you have an overlapping of the thumb. The thumb actually comes inside. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so we can draw this with better detail. So the thumb actually comes inside the hand a little bit. That's how you want to think about it. And then if this would be that first circle, we're going to draw here for to represent a knuckle. And it kind of comes in right here and it attaches. Just imagine this all right here being the the palm part of your thumb and the wrist is going to come off like that that's the convect the convect part the crunch part is on this side over here this is the stretch part because we're viewing it from the opposite way when it when it's viewed underneath like this let's go and get rid of some of these construction lines so we can start to draw more detail the next part of the palm we have is after you have this part here the thumb thumb part which is quite big then you have the part of the palm on this side which kind of comes and connects over here, part of the wrist, and then it kind of comes up, and it's, it's thicker here, and it gets thinner as it comes down over here to the pinky, but it's kind of shaped like that. So this is the thicker part, and it flattens out more over here. Whereas this here is quite, quite thick, and, and comes out quite far. We'll see that more from, from other views, like the side view. And these kind of, you know, kind of form together a little bit here and form you know, the tissues. So really, you would separate that with shadows. There might be a little bit of shadow on this side, just depending on where the light's coming from. Like so. And then you have this other part of the pad which comes up here. 
like this, and this, that's part of the pad there, and that's like your your calluses. There's almost like four of them, like almost as if they're kind of circular shaped, and these are your calluses underneath your hand. So what is important to understand here is if your calluses run, and the callus line also has that same angle to it like that, your callus line runs there, then you have your fingers, they're going to follow the same way. Now we're doing, remember the pinky is, is over here now, right, when you're on the underside, or the, excuse me, the middle finger. So the angle's going to come up and then down like that, the same thing over here. It's going to come up to the pinky, or excuse me, from the pinky up to the middle finger, and then down to the index finger, so have a shape like that. And your fingers have to fit into that area. You can kind of just block off your fingers in this area here, and that's a quick way to know, you know, about the thickness of your fingers. And then you can go in and, you know, start erasing some of the stuff in between. And just know that that's where your fingers are going to fit into. Let's go ahead and now and, and draw some of the fingers. We're, we're not adding too much anatomy to the fingers when you're drawing anime. Um, you're keeping it quite simple. I, I know there's some anime artists, though, that will draw them, you know, a lot more with a lot more anime, or not anime, a lot more anatomy to them. That is more detail, not, not quite as, as simplistic. Keep in mind, this is the under part of the finger, so you have, like, line indents here underneath where the knuckles will be. The knuckles will be on the top side, would be like that. And pretty much right in the middle of those knuckles, you have crease lines. And those crease lines would be where, where the finger bends. It's very rare, though, in, in anime or manga that you would actually draw those, those lines. Just know that they're there, so when you bend the finger, that's where they're bending from the underside. I'm just going to kind of come out to a point here for the middle finger. And then finally, the index finger is going to come over here. Right, so again, this is just the, the padding. So what to keep in mind, what we learned from over here, is the padding comes out farther than the knuckles, which means then, if you think about it, the knuckles then are underneath here, like this. If you imagine where the knuckles are, they're right about there. So if you were to bend your hand into a fist, like from the side view, you have your knuckle here, you have the padding comes out farther right here. That's your, that's your padding, so you see the angle there. Knuckles go back further than the padding. So that's because when you bend your hand, you can see that the padding actually bends uh, uh, with it. So when you make a fist, what happens is if you have a fist here, you have your, your knuckle here. We're going to do that kind of triangle shape that we talked about like this. And then have where it kind of goes like that. This kind of shape right here for our side view of the hand. This being the index finger, and this being the thumb. So when you start to make a fist, you have this padding which is right here and your knuckle is back and it's up here like this so when you make a fist then what happens is your finger comes out this way you have another knuckle here and you have that first you have the skin that comes up here between the knuckle that's that flap of skin I was talking about the triangle flap here between the hands this knuckle is going to come like this your thumb is going to kind of you know bend You'll be able to see this part of the knuckle of the thumb here, and then it's going to kind of come off like that back in the space where we can't really see all of it like that. It's being foreshortened. And then this finger is going to come down here to your next knuckle, which is here. It actually comes all the way down to the thumb, and then it kind of hides in here like this. You have that first crease, and you have your second crease, which kind of pies out like it kind of has that same kind of stretching motion where it's thin on this side and big on this side. And you have one more that's really scrunched up here. And then what we have now, this next piece of skin right in here, this piece of skin that's like it's very bulbous when you make a fist, comes up like that and follows this line here. Go and erase this other, all these other lines. That piece of skin right there is your underside callus. That's what that is right there. You might be able to see maybe another part of this knuckle over here. It depends on what angle we're viewing with. They'll see a little bit of that. A little bit of that top plane of the hand as it goes back into space. Like so. And so that would be, you know, and then the, and the, this part actually is that the thumb actually is going to come off a little bit like that and then come over here like so. All right, you get the idea. So that's how you make a, make a fist. And you can make it, you know, crunch it in more. But what I want to really show here is that, that flap of skin, which is your actual pad, your under pad. So when you're making a fist, that piece of skin right there is this whole under pad right here. And it's this part of the under pad right here 
that's being flexed when you make a fist. It's being it's being scrunched up and, and squished. Go ahead and look at your hand. Look at the thumb and index finger like like this view here, and then make a fist and watch that part of the part of your hand. All this under part here, all this, all this part right here. Watch it scrunch up like that, and the, so the knuckles are right. So if the, this is the knuckle, this is the under pad right here. It squishes, and so just remember that it comes out a little bit further. The next thing we're going to do is uh, continue drawing the hands. You have that first knuckle, then you can have the second knuckle. The second knuckle, it's it almost always falls back behind this pad part here, and then you kind of just draw almost like straight lines connecting them, and then a little bit of a bump like this, and you have this last tip part of your thumb which comes off like that and so kind of goes like so that would be like under under view of the hand of course you know this isn't the best uh, drawing I'm just trying to show the principles and drawing here quickly as I can in real time you know I can go back and start fixing some of this up let's go and zoom in here a bit so what we're going to see then is that under pad you have different you know lines and wrinkles we don't draw those but um, you just think about the actual the actual pad part, just know that it fits right into here. You have these like individual pad calluses here, and then you might have shed them between all this. Right now it'd be the under underside of the hand. And if I were to take my my time and actually draw the hands a little bit slower and a little more carefully, you would end up something like this for the palm side and the, the knuckle up side. Just remember that the palm side here is a little bit lower than the knuckle side. And that's where you can actually bend your hand properly. And just, you know, look at your hand and bend it a couple of times, you'll see that that is true. All right, so if we keep some of these principles in mind, then when we're doing the side view, it makes it a little bit easier to draw. So the first thing is, of course, you're going to have your, your wrist coming down like this here. And because we have that, you know, this angle in here, the stretching convec and convexing, the thumb's actually going to overlap here like this. And then the wrist is going to come off like that, and you're going to have a little bit of, usually, shadow right here. Then, there, like I said, there's usually a bump right here because that's where your all your bones are, and you're and you're flexing your hand. It looks a little better when you when you draw the hand and the arms on the side. Even if you have your your arms coming down, let's say like you have your your head here, collarbones, oops, collarbones, rib cage, and your hands are going to come down like this here. This is your forearm. Sometimes it's cool to actually have the hand kind of bend in like this a little bit. When you whatever you know whatever pose you're doing, and it kind of kind of comes in like that, and it has that little bend to the wrist. I think that always looks cool, um, and it has more powerful pose. So you know, hand gestures are are important to your poses, and so you really want to learn how to draw them well. You don't want to skip out in hand. So that's your first knuckle there. I talked about you have this first knuckle here. Let's go ahead and, and add that in. Now remember, I said the padding is is large, and it covers this whole, and it goes it extends out a little bit further than the middle of the knuckle here, and so that covers that whole area. Um, basically, think of it as the padding extending out from each side of the center of that knuckle that you bend. And that's why when you when you bend your hand into a fist, that part gets scrunched up more. And then it kind of comes over here to that in, that skin in between, and we have the thumb closer so that skin is not stretched too much. And then the thumb is actually going to overlap that. This, that is, this part of the knuckle here is going to overlap that thumb a little bit. And I like to actually draw that in when I draw my thumb. Remember that the whole entire muscle here comes off. This is you see part of that pad. Remember we talked about the uh, this part this pad right here is quite large. And so from the side view, you can actually see that padding a little bit. If you look at your own hand from the side view, you'll see that if you have your 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 um, wrist coming straight out like this, I'll go ahead and just draw right here for now I'm seeing with my wrist. You have your wrist coming out like that. You have that bone structure here like this. Hands coming off over here. Now when the thumb comes off, you notice it comes off below, the padding comes off below like this, below the hand, it extends down further, and then your thumb is all right here, you have that first knuckle, second knuckle, so your thumb fits in, let's say that area here, and then you would have hand, you know, coming off like that, let's say. What's important is you have that part coming down, extending down. That part's important to understand and memorize. So even when the hand's bent like this, you still have to have that part coming off of the hand. And that those two knuckles. And definitely even in manga, you're gonna kind of show some semblance of those knuckles, because that's what gives the thumb its shape. 
might even show this, this knuckle right here a little bit because you have the, your main knuckle, your fist knuckle, then you have your first knuckle and second knuckle. So you have this first flange knuckle here and the second knuckle. And typically how the knuckles work uh, from the front view is you have this first knuckle here and then not exactly halfway but almost halfway you have your first knuckle and then it gets shorter as, as and third. So it's like you have this first length here and then if you were to divide this in half here, go a little bit higher or excuse me, a little bit lower, then you have your second knuckle. So the, the lengths actually get shorter as they go down, if you think about it like so, perpetually shorter. So if you had your finger here, this is the whole length of the finger, let's say. First imagine dividing in half. And that's kind of where your first knuckle is going to be, a little bit behind that. Then imagine dividing that part in half from here to here in half, and then make it down just a little bit further. And that's pretty much what happens. It gets smaller as it goes down, then you have a little bit of your thumbnail down there. Right, so continue on from the side view, then you have that second knuckle, and usually it's just that last knuckle. You might show a little bit of an indent right here. Because the main thing um, the anime sometimes likes to show from side views is this shape right here. You have that knuckle, and it kind of dips down to your fingernail. This is, you know, drawn it, blown up big, like that right there. Of course, if you're drawing your hand small on a panel, then you're not going to actually have all that detail. You might see a little bit of this back knuckle back here from the middle finger. And it really just depends on the pose that we're drawing here. That's a little bit too. I just want to dip down a little bit for that shape right there. And you might be able to see a little bit of that ring finger behind. Like that. And the pinky might not see at all from this side view. If you were to take this thumb right here and you were to move it out more, stretch it out more. something like that, maybe not that far. There's a limit how far you can stretch it, and that limit is that skin between it, you know, it, it's only so stretchable, so. Now that skin between there is gonna stretch more. And when that happens, we're gonna see less of this inside bone here. It's now being covered by the skin that stretches from right at that bone, or pretty much right at it, and it kinda comes like this here. Boom, like that. Right, so that's that skin that stretches here between the knuckles. That's how it would look like if you open it up more. All right, let's go ahead and put it back down to a more, more delicate way, though, like that. Same thing from you know another side, but you're bending the wrist outward. You still draw the same details on this hand here. So you still have the palm coming out a little bit further like this. That's that under side might draw it's a little semblance of a nail here sometimes anime will do that um, and all of this is up to you like there's no definite style for anime you know you you are the deciding factor of what your anime looks like you don't have to draw like everyone else that's really important because you can see there's there's tons of different comic artists out there like American comic artists and they don't all draw the same you know, they might, you know, so if you're working for a certain company and they want a certain look, then yeah, you have to draw that style. So it's good to understand how to draw in certain people's styles, but it's also good to develop your own style. And naturally, you probably will. There'll be certain things, certain ways you just, you know, gravitate toward or certain ways you just like drawing things. And so just don't be afraid to draw things in your own style. You know, they still have the anime proportions and stuff, but there's certain little tweaks and stuff that you can do, little details you might add that other people don't. And that's going to make your anime stand out, look a little different. Just keep in mind, whatever details you add, um, if you're doing anime, you're having to do frames and frames. And if you're just the keyframe artist, you're still having to draw a lot of keyframes. And if you're drawing manga, which is the comic version, uh, then you're going to have to draw many, many, you're going to draw that person many times over in many panels. So just keep in mind that the reason why cartoons are simple, whether they're you know comic type cartoons or animated cartoons, is because you have to draw them over and over and over again. And you don't want to have to, you know, draw something that's very complex over and over and over again. And also, you know, when the hand's far away in a panel, if the panel's only, you know, taken up, this, this right here is like a, you know, regular 11, 11 by 8 piece of paper, which comic books are usually a little bit bigger than that. But um, they use like 14. But anyway, so if you look at this right here and you have a panel that's only taking up this much space on the printed paper, when you print that out and you have a person standing here, 
And you're just seeing, you know, some of their upper part of their body like this, and then here's a collarbone, here's their arm coming out, and their hands come up like this. Their hand's very tiny on that panel, on that page. You can only draw so much detail of that, otherwise it's not going to be visible to the person that's trying to read it. Whether they're trying to read it online or they're trying to read it offline, it's still going to be very tiny. Just make sure that you add less detail. And that's why oftentimes faces will have very little detail. You can see how actually small I'm actually drawing all, all this stuff here. If I were to print this out, these would be very tiny on the page. Over here is the page. Look how much of the page they take. So they'd be very tiny if I were to print this out on a, on a regular 11, 11 by uh, 8 piece of paper. All right, so this turned out to be a pretty long bonus video, but you know I did cover a lot of information about the hand. And hopefully, you know, you know, I did a little bit differently than I did other other things in the past and other courses. That way, you know, you feel like you're learning some new aspects of the hand. It's like some new knowledge of the hand. Um, also, just keep in mind where stuff bends. You have your metacarpal bone that comes out here. That makes that first. This one here doesn't move, but these next bones, this first flange, second flange, and tip does move, and that's where you actually have your your movement of your hand. So you have a crease here, crease here, crease here, and just imagine that. And that's where your hand's actually going to bend. So if you wanted to bend that finger, you'd start from here. You'd come down, have that first part here, like that. And then you'd have the second part, you can bend it. And then the third part, you can bend it even, and, and bend it a little bit like that. And that would be the basic construction. And then you would have to act, you know, make sure they keep the same lengths, you know, like that. And, and, and keep those same measurements coming down here. Make sure they keep the same thickness as well. And then I can actually draw the person doing something different with their hand, like making a... Uh, almost like that Buddha type um, peace signal or something like that and that's the way the, the fingers bend and the fingers can move you know up this way and then down this way and you can also you know have them come up like that and then have that last knuckle bend right here that's harder to do so not everyone can do that but um, that is something you can do I probably drew that a little bit long but you get the idea if I were just to kind of come out from here and draw that first section second section third section that third section can actually bend like that and you know, all that's a little bit thin but you get the idea right you can also just bend this part here and then come down and keep it all straight like that and so you know just keep in mind the way different ways you can move your hand just study your own hand and know how you can move it. you can also bend your thumb and pinky together this can reach this you can actually touch your pinky and thumb together so Face your palm up, look at your hand, and touch your pinky and thumb together. You'll notice that this part here and this part bend separately, and they they like act like separate parts of hands, and they can come towards each other and not quite touch, but they, they move toward each other as if they're trying to touch. And this part right here, this whole part here, it bends when you do that. So you can actually bend it to where, if you were to view the hand from the front view, like this where you're seeing the wrist is back here, top part of the hand is being foreshortened a lot, and you're seeing that under part of the hand, like this, this is where your fingers will fit into. And then your fingers are going to come off here, and they're, going to, they're going to all going to be foreshortened. We kind of drew something similar to this before. Right, all foreshortened in the thumb. I don't know, let's say uh, thumb is on this side over here. It's coming off, and it's coming down. Actually, it's coming down back behind us a little bit like that, so we can't totally see it. Probably comes up up there a little bit higher than the other wrist. Anyway, what's important here is that this part here it it bends, it can turn, and when you try to touch your pinky to your thumb together from that front view, you'll see that this right here really bends. That is, your thumb has to come over here, your pinky has to come over here and touch, and so this whole arch right here really curves, and the whole hand really kind of bends like that. And that's important. Over that little sketch makes sense. I didn't spend much time on it, but that's how that works. All right, so I think that covers the uh, bonus video, how to draw hands and uh, for, for anime and manga. Uh, anime just being the cartoon version, the animated version, and manga being the comic, the comic version, Japanese comics and Japanese cartoons. Hey, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and uh, check out the course. It's really cool. Again, it's, um, I'll put a link to the course here just in case you want it. And it's uh, how to draw anime bodies and or people and bodies. And it's really important to learn the proper proportions and stuff, how to draw that. If you've already taken my other courses before, it's going to build up, build on that knowledge and help you take that and, and refine it to where you can draw anime figures, which is a, a particular stylized type of figure. 
If you have any, and also if you join the course, you can actually recommend and suggest other bonus videos. Another bonus video I do plan to come out with is how to draw anime feet. So join it, and in that you'll see that video will be in there. And I'm going to take a whole a, a different approach than I've taken in my other courses and stuff on how to draw feet specifically for anime, and try to cover some you know different ways of, of drawing the feet as if they're already attached to the body, like more natural ways that we'd see the feet. Um, yeah, so that'd be another bonus video. And then if you join the course or you're already part of the course, you can actually recommend. Uh, other bonus videos that you like to see as part of the course or maybe recommend other full lessons that should be part of the course that I didn't put in the actual course like say hey and so in this section right here where you talk about anatomy what if you kind of did a figure um, in a certain pose and then showed like where all the muscles kind of attach to that stick figure or maybe make that a bonus video whatever all right thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this hey if you did go ahead and share it with your friends on uh, Facebook just click that share button there below the video and click on Google Plus or Facebook, whatever you want to share it to you. I'm sure they would enjoy it too, just as, just as you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Your guys' support is, is awesome. I really appreciate it. And um, I have a Google Plus page. And hopefully, when I actually come up with new videos, you actually see them on there um, on, on your front screen. I don't know if YouTube is doing a good job of doing that, where it shows you my videos when they come out. Hopefully, they are. That way, you guys can stay up and, and see them. Just in case they're not, though, you might want to go ahead and join um, my website as a VIP member so you can at least get the VIP videos emailed to you so you can say, oh, okay, cool, you just get, you know, get in, in touch with that right there. And then also, another way to, all, to make sure you always see my new videos coming out, I always Twitter my new videos and I also um, Facebook them. So if you join my Facebook or join my Twitter, uh, which is here on my account, you can, you can join that very easy or on my website, just click on my website masterpaintingnow.com and at the top there you'll see that I have my little icons um, for a Twitter account and stuff like that. Just click on the Twitter account thing and then uh, become a follow me on Twitter and then you'll have updates whenever I come out with a, a new video. So yeah, you know, you'll see the little icons there. Either follow me on Twitter or Facebook, either one. Again, thank you for watching. Sorry for uh, some of the rambling there toward the end.